Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a red white or Boros aggro deck. Sometimes this style of deck is also referred to as a heroic deck, even though we don't have any creatures with the heroic mechanic anymore. We still have lots of creatures that benefit from being targeted by pump spells and other various cantrips. Illuminator Virtuoso is kind of our key threat in this deck, a 2 mana 1 1 double strike, and whenever it becomes the target of a spell we control, it connives. So we can draw and discard. If we discard a non land card, we can put a plus one plus one counter on it, which which adds up very quickly with a double strike. And then this style of deck is now made possible thanks to the recent addition of Loran's Escape as a one mana protection spell, can give an artifact or creature we control hexproof and indestructible until end of turn, and we also get to scry one. So that makes it much easier to go all in on one creature when we know we can protect it for just one mana. And another key card in this deck is Angel Fire Ignition as a nice curve topper to give our creature two plus one plus one counters, Vigilance, Trample, a lifelink, indestructible and haste until end of turn, and we can even flash it back out of the graveyard, so sometimes we're okay discarding it to connive, as we'll still be able to cast it later in the game, and the ignition can also be a huge swing in a matchup, especially against the more aggressive decks, and also pairs very well with a double striking virtuoso. Our other creatures include electrostatic infantry, a 1-2 trampler, saying whenever we cast an instant or sorcery it picks up a plus one plus one counter, and then a two copies of Baird, which is a 2-2, saying at the beginning of our end step, if we control a creature with power greater than its base power, we get to make a 1-1 soldier token. So our various pump spells and plus one counters also play very well with Baird, helps us go wide to maybe deal the finishing points, and some of the weaknesses of this style of deck is if our opponent has a lot of early spot removal and we run out of creatures, then our pump spells are stranded in hand, so making those extra soldiers can come in handy, and also protects us against edict effects like Invoke Despair or Liliana's minus two ability by just making a few extra tokens we don't mind sacrificing. And then at one mana we've got a full set of Monastery Swiss Beer, reprinted in the Brothers War, a 1-2 with haste and prowess, so we'll get plus one plus one until end of turn whenever we cast a non-creature spell, so that can also help enable Baird, and we'll trigger off all the various cantrips and pump spells in our deck, and then it will also trigger off our enchantment, unlike the Electrostatic Infantry which only triggers off instants and sorceries, Swiss Beer also works with enchantments, and our etching can deal one damage, can provide an extra plus one counter on the second chapter which also helps enable Baird, and and eventually turns into a 2-2 creature with haste. And then our pump spells include four copies of Ancestral Anger, giving a creature trample and plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is one plus the number of copies of Anger in our graveyard, so we'll also scale nicely if we happen to draw multiples, and plays very well with our double striking Virtuoso. We've got our Laurent's Escape, and then four copies of Homestead Courage, giving a plus one plus one counter and a Vigilance until end of turn, and can also be flashed back out of the graveyard for just a single white, so yet another card we don't mind discarding to connive for value. And then we also have four copies of Play With Fire as a cheap burn spell, dealing two damage to any target, and potentially letting us scry one if we target our opponent. And then our mana base also got a big upgrade with four copies of Battlefield Forge. Without it, the mana base would be pretty clunky, and we would be forced to play four copies of Thran Portal, which I'm not a huge fan of. You could still play a few copies of Portal to maybe improve the mana base slightly, but I'm not the biggest fan of that card. And then four copies of Sundown Pass, not the best in this deck since we would prefer to keep the land count as low as possible, but it is still a necessary evil since we do need red early for Kumano and Swiss Spear. And then we also often want double white to cast and flashback courage or keep up Laurent's escape. So the mana base is definitely one of the weak points of this deck, despite only being two colors, just because it has these very demanding requirements. And then we've got the Crucible and Iganjo's additional interaction, five planes and seven mountains. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Got a Swift Spear, no second creature, but we have an escape to protect it. So we'll try. And then hope it doesn't get removed right away, and Ancestral Anger can put in some good work, especially multiples. Okay, so let's Anger. And Virtuoso is a nice pickup. So, hit for three, and then next turn I can play Virtuoso with Escape backup, setting up a nice Ignition. Put on black-white, so we could expect some removal. The Darker Wastes as well. They could also have a counterspell for Virtuoso now. So step one might be to attack. 
Question is whether I want Ancestral Anger or keep up Laurent's escape. I think we just attack, play Virtuoso, keep up escape. Although I could also Virtuoso main phase if they counter it, then I could consider Ancestral Anger. Although then removal on Swift Spear leaves us without any creatures. So tricky spot. Let's attack first. Maybe they use spot removal on the Swift Spear. And then we can protect Virtuoso instead. Alright, go for the throat, perfect. So gonna hang on to Lauren's escape. Now we could still get punished if our opponent makes a sacrifice a creature, let's say a Liliana of the Veils, minus two. Then escape's not gonna be very helpful. But don't expect that out of a, an Esper control deck necessarily. Okay, double escape. So now I'm tempted to Ancestral Anger over Ignition, wait until we can keep up double escape, in case your opponent has multiple spot removal spells. Could also consider discarding Ignition for Knife value. Kumano may be worth discarding as well at this point. And a play with Fire. So I think I'm okay playing out Crucible instead of channeling it and then hit for 8, so this is a pretty fast clock. And we can protect with an escape. Discard, play with fire. Hang on to Swiss Pier. Infantry doesn't seem necessary anymore. So this is hitting the opponent for 10 now. And then do I need to play out Swiss Pier? Yeah, I guess it doesn't hurt. Protect us against the sacrifice effect. So we're presenting the lethal with a virtuoso and we can protect it, so we're in a perfect spot facing a control deck pretty much. Ignition to trample over any chum blockers. And Rona's Vortex, we will attempt to escape. Even if they have another spot removal spell, we can still ignition the Swiss Spear and do some serious damage. And our opponent counters our protection spell, all right, fair enough. So Virtuoso does get bounced, get to discard Courage for value. So lands now, giving Virtuoso haste with Ignition would also be lethal. Although Swiss Spear plus Ignition also does it since our opponent had to take some damage off their Adarkar Wastes. So our opponent could technically have another Vortex in hand, although don't expect it here. So what's the best play? Maybe Ancestral Anger, and then Homestead Courage, so we don't have to waste the Ignition in case there is some interaction. Although this is already lethal. Alright, sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and seems fine. Kumano into Infantry, Homestead Courage, also quite good with Infantry, as we'll get a ton of extra counters. Don't have any interaction for the opponent's creatures, which could become a problem later. But being on the play also helps with our aggressive game plan. Red-black. Okay, so we could go for the higher upside play of Virtuoso, assuming it survives. Although I don't necessarily expect it to against red-black. So I'm gonna hang on to Virtuoso until later. Infantry still dies to cut down. Although it's going to be out of range as soon as we pick up an extra plus one counter. And there's an Abrade instead. Okay, Lauren's escape is good, so now I could play Virtuoso with escape backup. And then next turn maybe go to town with Homestead Courage. Turn three, do we see a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, perhaps? It's going to be Harvester. That's fine. And Ancestral Anger the draw, that's a good one. So let's say the opponent does have a cut down, we can use Escape to protect Virtuoso, and then it's probably going to have enough counters on it, so the minus two from Harvester can't kill it next turn. So going for Anger seems safe enough. Maybe even discarding the Infantry or Homestead Courage, also good value thanks to Flashback, even though I might want to cast it several times here. So, close call. I think we can probably go all in on the Virtuoso, so I'll keep the Homestead Courage. Find another Planes, so cast Courage. And 
and then can flash it back once again since Virtuoso is out of range of cutdown as soon as it gets an extra counter. So that's not a concern anymore. Yeah, I think we put another counter on Virtuoso here. And our opponent could maybe trade for etching and then have a sacrifice effect to get rid of Virtuoso. So I may not want to attack with etching since our opponent could have, let's say, Liliana of the Veil to make a sacrifice Virtuoso after trading. Whereas if they don't get to trade here, maybe try and use Harvester on etching. I can use Escape on etching at least to then keep our Virtuoso alive. So let's try that. Just hit for 10. Opponent trumps, that's fine. Still get to trample over. And then now we're safe against an Edict effect. And we have protection against spot removal. A 5-4 double strike should be large enough to attack past any blocker, including Shieldred. So, I like our position. Soaring City could have been a way to bounce Virtuoso, although Escape still protects against it. And there's a turn 4 Fable now. Okay, so we get to untap. And now I can use Iganjo to kill the Shaman if they were to block Etching. So, can attack with both now, I think. Opponent Trumps, that happens. Opponent falls to 7. Should maybe keep Lions in hand in case we want to discard them with Connive. So Invoke Despair doesn't do it since we can still hit the opponent for 8. So it's going to require a pretty specific sequence. Maybe a removal spell plus make disappear to counter Loran's escape. And opponent goes for a go for the throat. Let's see if we can uh, counter it here. Discard land, hang on to Baird in case we need another threat. Scry land to the bottom. So a second go for the throat could save them. Although they might have wanted to cast it in response. So just a Harvester as a chum blocker now. No way to give Virtuoso Trample. But we can attack, force them to chump, play Baird, which will make an extra 1-1. One, one. So we're still safe from an Invoke Despair. And then we might be going wide enough where we can even win without Virtuoso. And we can channel Iganjo for two mana now, thanks to Baird being legendary. Alright, let's see if we can uh, deal the finishing blow next turn. Corpse Appraiser can draw. Opponent goes digging for another spot removal spell. And yeah, if they found one, we could be in trouble. There we see the Invoke Despair. And they found a go for the throat, so... Now we could be in trouble. Lauren's escape, a draw step late. Can still attack with all and have Iganjo's interaction. So let's go for it. Okay, so I can kill either Corpse Appraiser or Reflection. Reflection's probably the scarier card, and then I can use Lauren's escape on Bear to keep it alive. And then our opponent falls to two, and we would still have our entire board intact. So I think that's the play. And then hope to scry into Angel Fire Ignition, for instance. Ancestral Anger should also be good enough. Alright. Pass it back. There's Shieldred to the rescue, perhaps. Blood Token represents two life. Opponent's gonna do it now so they don't lose to an instant speed play with fire. So Ancestral Anger will make an extra token with Baird. Let's pump the etching and hope to draw into another good card, play with fire. Okay, so now etching can attack and finish off Shieldred. Do we attack with all is a question. Let's say they put Shieldred on etching, Corpse Appraiser on Baird. Then we would lose Baird, finish off Shieldred and put the opponent to two. That doesn't seem as good as just attacking with etching. I guess they can block with Corpse Appraiser. 
So maybe I have to attack with 1-1 one, one and etching, but then they block Shieldred on 1-1, one, one, Corpse Appraiser on etching, and then we're still one point short. So maybe attack with all is the only way to guarantee the opponent blocking with Shieldreds on etching. Yeah, close call. I guess we do send everyone, since I don't think we can beat Shieldred if it sticks around. Okay, play with Fire Shieldreds. So that dies at least. Opponent falls to two. But now we're in a top deck battle against Grixis, which does not favor us in the slightest. Another play with Fire would do it. Maybe an Ignition. For now, both passing. Another land. Okay, the suspense is killing me. Opponent could also have a counter spell in hand, for all we know. There's Ignition. Let's give it a shot. Can also flash it back. That worked. So I guess we'll flash it back now, and our opponent concedes. Wow, what a close game here against Grixis. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems promising. Swift Spear into Virtuoso with a couple pump spells. Well, let's see what we're up against. Could also decide to wait on Virtuoso if we fear that it gets removed, but against a Soldier's deck, that's probably not the case. So, can attack. Don't really want to trade Swiss Spear for Officer, but opponent's unlikely to block here into two open mana. And then next turn we can Courage, Flashback Courage, or maybe keep up Escape to protect against a Brutal Cathar. Right, Thalia's kind of annoying. Is your opponent on the Mono White version, perhaps? So I can still attack and Lauren's escape, but now a Brutal Cathar could punish us. I think we still attack. Hope they block Swift Spear with Thalia. And then I can double Lauren's escape. Opponent just takes it. So this is three damage. Not a race we're necessarily winning, but the question is whether we want to keep up escape for a Brutal Cathar. And uh, I think the answer is yes for now. Maybe next turn, if I can hit an extra land drop, we can connive into a land and have another escape available. But that's not the case right now, since we have a lot riding on Virtuoso surviving. There's another officer instead. Could see the Lord pumping all soldiers. Opponent passes with all their creatures back on defense. So, what's on tap? Another homestead courage. Yeah, this is... Not great, opponent could flash into 1-1s one -ones as well. But now we could maybe connive into a land, especially combined with a scry. So I think we keep attacking. There's the reinforcements, as we suspected. And just a chum block on Virtuoso. So we could cast a Loran's Escape just to connive and try and find another land, basically. That may be worth it, since we're kind of falling behind on board otherwise. Another Virtuoso. Okay, so now we have a backup if there's a Brutal Cathar. And Ancestral Anger doesn't seem great in the face of Thalia. So now a Cathar is going to be less backbreaking at least. Rapid Adversary can pump their team as well. Something like a play with fire would be useful to either take out Adversary or Thalia. Although just a fourth land for Ignition would go a long way. It's gonna be an Anger instead. Can go for Homestead Courage, which will keep Virtuoso on defense. And then maybe connive into an extra land as well. Swiss Spear instead. Discard Courage again. So that can hit for 8, and then play another Swiss Spear, so I guess the original Swiss Spear might be able to attack. Unless our opponent kills Virtuoso next turn with a Brutal Cathar, then we could be in danger. But I don't think we're necessarily playing around it anymore. Opponent takes it. Okay, let's cross our fingers for no removal on Virtuoso. 
The first striking Virtuoso can kill Adversary, so the opponent's team shrinks down. The other opponent's got another Adversary. Does that change the map? Thalia and the Officers attack. And opponent goes all out, so if we block Adversary, jump, let's say, a Thalia here. That's the best we can do. And we fall to one, so we're still alive. Sadly, no land for ignition, although Ancestral Anger giving Virtuous a trample could be good enough here. Draw land. So we can cast a Lawrence Escape for an extra counter if needed. And then there's probably no reason to attack with Swift Spear, but don't think it matters now. So yeah, close one. The uh, first striking Virtuoso able to kill the adversary, which shrinks down the opponent's team, and they were one point short. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. This hand doesn't have any creatures, so that's a mulligan, unfortunately. This is better. So we've got Kumano into turn two Virtuoso as an option, or we could go Kumano into turn two Swiss Spear plus another Kumano and then Virtuoso, although that means probably getting rid of Ignition. So, close call. I think we stick to the one drop plan. And then next turn, playing Kumano will also trigger Swiss Spear, so that's a good sequence. And then we'll have a larger Virtuoso on the following turn. Up against maybe a blue haughty gin deck, in which case having this aggressive start is great. Blue white instead, and a modern age, so some sort of graveyard reanimator deck, I'm sure. And yeah, there's a portal to Phyrexia. Well, let's try and kill our opponent before they get it in play. And we might be able to with this hand. Attack for 4, 2-2 two, two double strike. Hope there's no temporary lockdown. That would be the best they can do here. It's going to be a faithful mending, that's fine. So we're looking at a turn 5 way to bring back portal, either invoke justice or repair and recharge. So yeah, can attack and then play infantry if we'd like, or keep it back in case of a board wipe like depopulate. Sadly, no pump spell to go on the Virtuoso to close out the game right now. Bone falls to three. Do they have a board wipe? Yep, depopulates at least cost them one life, so land for Crucible would be game here, as we can make two haste creatures. Sadly, we find a Virtuoso. So yeah, next turn our opponent can bring back Portal or Swirling Sky. So that's not ideal. I guess with a land, Crucible can still kill them if they bring back Portal. So I should definitely still play a creature, and I guess Virtuoso at least threatens lethal by itself, whereas Infantry does not. So this Crucible could win us the game if we draw land next turn, assuming our opponent brings back Portal. Another Faithful Mending to gain some life instead. Opponent back up to four. Discards another Mending, Ancestral Anger. Yeah, let's go for it. Question is whether I want to play an Infantry first. Although that might be overextending into a portal, and this could be lethal already, and we might want to discard Infantry to connive. And yeah, I think that makes sense. And now we have the land for Crucible, and our opponent concedes. So luckily they didn't have the reanimation spell. Although, yeah, Crucible might have been a sneaky way around it anyways. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems reasonable. Couple two-mana creatures. Play with fires, early interaction. And then now Ignition will play well with Baird and Virtuoso. So which creature do we want to play first? I guess green-white. I guess Virtuoso applies the most pressure if we maybe plan to play Ignition next turn. Opponent Naya colors with a Fable of the Mirror Breaker. So we could play Infantry and then play with Fire. And then pick up an extra counter which will enable Baird going forward. And 
and then maybe next turn go for ignition. Or we could play it safe, play Baird, keep up Polaron's escape. Opponent discarding a portal to Phyrexia, so we know what they're planning here. Maybe a chaotic transformation deck, which can get to portal and play on turn 6. Ancestral Anger is interesting. If your opponent passes with 4 mana up, they might have a big score to discard and make some treasures. If your opponent is eventually going to get a portal in play, I guess Baird making a token would be a way to kind of play around it a little bit. I think we Ancestral Anger and then Connive to try and hit an extra land drop, maybe. And we can discard one Ignition, I think. And there's a land, perfect. So now we can attack, play Baird, and keep up Loron's escape. And then next turn we might be threatening lethal. There's a big score, like we suspected. Okay, play Baird and pass. But if they have the Chaotic Transformation, we're definitely in trouble. At least our land came into play tapped, so they won't be able to transform a treasure into another portal. So our opponent passes. And then now probably go for Angel Fire Ignition on Virtuoso with Escape to protect it. That will deal the most damage. And let's see here, Kumano does not trigger infantry. So we might end up discarding it here. Sure, an extra counter for Connive. Move to combat, attack. Virtuoso has indestructible, but we can also give it hexproof if needed, and our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. No white mana, so I don't think I can keep this, sadly. This is better. And then what do I get rid of? So I can play turn 1 Swiss Spear, turn 2 Kumano, plus another Swiss Spear. Although then I would need to keep double Mountain, and I'm not going to be able to play Virtuoso on 3 to get a counter, unless I draw planes. But getting rid of Sundown Pass seems counterproductive. So maybe we get rid of a mountain, turn one play a tap land, and then turn two I can go Swiss Spear plus Kumano, and then turn after a Virtuoso with a counter. Sure. Opponent on mono red. Okay. We drew a mountain, so now I can still play Swiss Spear and then turn two Swiss Spear plus Kumano to pump both, and turn after a Virtuoso with a counter. And then we really need to find our Angel Fire Ignition as the single most important card in this matchup. Bonus got Kumano, but no second Swiss Spear. Uh, Phoenix Chick instead. Okay, so we've got a similar start. Loran's Escape is useful. We are on the draw, so don't expect to win this race necessarily, but... Swiss Spear, much better on offense than defense, so we'll still attack for now. Won't be able to play Virtuoso with Escape backup, unfortunately. So don't expect it to necessarily survive, although Lightning Strike on Swiss Spear main phase makes that slightly more likely. I guess your opponent doesn't know we're red-white. And a Homestead Courage, a decent draw as well. So, yeah, I guess we play Virtuoso, attack for one. Hope Virtuoso survives, but if it doesn't, we can still pump our Swiss Spear with Homestead Courage, at least. A land number three. And a Mechanized Warfare, alright, so... No burn spell for Virtuoso is huge. Kumano doesn't get to attack into Virtuoso. So we'll take the damage here, which is 5 total. We get our own etching. And then now, 
could cast Homestead Courage on Virtuoso, flash it back on something else, and then maybe force the opponent to chum block. Let's see. We're definitely getting close to that point. Play with fire. So, do we just get rid of Lauren's escape at this point? I think so. If our opponent has a burn spell with Warfare, they're just going to point it upstairs to try and kill us. So we can flashback Courage, give something else Vigilance. Let's say the Swift Spear here. Attack. If I just play with Fire Dashing, what happens? 12 Fiat and we just have Lethal, so I guess it works. Okay, close one here against Monored. Luckily, Virtuoso survived. And we were able to cross the finish line, even on the draw. So yeah, overall, the Zaboros aggro deck can deliver the beatdowns. The key is often to have Virtuoso survive. So sometimes that means playing at turn 3 with Laurent's Escape as protection, as opposed to just curving out with it. And then uh, Angel Fire Ignition, another key card, and closing out the game eventually if there's a board stall. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.